It's the old damsel in distress story. It's Onimusha Warlords for the PlayStation 2. Alright. You gotta love the description on the back of the box. In a world of darkness and magic, our hungry warlords battle one another for control of feudal Japan. It's like something out of a movie trailer. But, uh, yeah. First Sony Musha game, man. It's, it's probably my favorite. Something because it's a very short but sweet game, you know? Anyways, let's unbox it. You know, I remember at the time this game came out, this was like the first must-have game for the system. Um, they had lots of publicity and hype leading up to it. And for the most part, I'd say it delivered. I wouldn't necessarily call it the uh, PS2's killer app, as that definitely goes to Metal Gear Solid 2, but you know, I think this game is pretty good. Uh, this game still looks nice, especially if you're playing like on a CRT, because the backgrounds are pre-rendered. So, if you're playing like with component or RGB, this game really, really pops out. I know some people don't really like this game and just call it Resident Evil with Swords. And yeah, for the most part, that's what it is, but I don't know, there's more to it than that, you know? Another complaint people like to say about this game is that it's a short game, you know? Um, I can see maybe back when this game was brand new for $50, but come on, come on. Come on, come on! This game is super cheap now, so there's really no excuse. It's one of the cheapest games for the system, so. Anyways, you just want to kind of cut right down the center here. So since this was a fairly early PS2 game, uh, they didn't have the memory card slot holder yet in these cases. So these are the very original cases for PS2 games. Just something to be aware of. So there's a game. And here's the manual.
So it's in black and white. It's very typical of Capcom for some reason. They didn't feel the need to use color in their manuals. But whatever. So tells you how to set up the game as if you've never played a video game before. New game, load game options. Controls. So since this was supposed to be a Resident Evil spin-off, it has the tank controls. Which I don't mind personally, but I know some people hate them. But hey, they're fine for me. More controls. Talking about the story. The story is based off of Nobunaga during 1560. But of course, since it's a video game, you gotta add a twist to it. So here are the players, Tamanosuke is the main player. And then later on in the game, you can play as Kaidi. Uh, she's faster, but she has a shorter range attack, so. It, it changes up the gameplay a little bit. So there's Princess Yuki. She gets kidnapped, and of course you have to rescue her. And then Nobunaga, the main antagonist in the game. Option mode. So what's neat about this game is you can choose whether the characters speak in English or Japanese, which definitely fits better with this type of game. Uh, let's see, got sound settings. So there's three different sound settings you can choose from. Stereo A, Stereo B, and Stereo C. Stereo A is just fine for stereo speaker systems. And what's neat about Stereo B is if an enemy is approaching on the right side of the screen, then they will make a noise on the right speaker. Stereo C is weird, like, it says stereo sound to the character's opposite direction. If your character is facing toward you, when something is on the right side of the screen makes a sound, the sound comes from the left? Like, what? Why would you want that? I could see if this was like, first person, yeah, but, I don't know, that's just a weird... A weird option, in my opinion. So, status screen.
So the souls in this game are basically your currency. Um, that's what you use to power up your your swords. And I believe you can power up other things too, like bow and arrows and stuff. Basic attacks. Special attack. And what's neat is you have a counter attack called Isun, where if you attack the enemy right before they attack you, you kill them instantly, no matter how much health they have. So that's pretty neat. So yeah, souls. Red soul enhances your ogre gauntlets, or an orb. Blue soul increases your character's magic power. And yellow soul increases your character's vitality. Inventory. So you can tell by like the inventory screen and stuff, you can tell this was going to be a Resident Evil spin-off. And he didn't really change it. So that's kind of neat that they kept it that way. File, map, return to gameplay. So just like Resident Evil, you do have herbs in the game. You also have medicine, which would be like the first aid. So, let's see. Enhancing items and orbs. That's basically when you want to upgrade your swords, you have to sp spend your souls to upgrade them. Uh, Here, just talking about the character chain. So, when you switch to Kaidi. Saving your game. I you save your game at these magic mirrors. And yeah. This was very common to advertise like the strategy guide and the manual. Right, so. And not everyone had the internet back then yet, so people would still buy strategy guides. You really don't need it for this game, but hey, it's neat to have. And yeah. So Capcom as yeah, was like this program where you can send in points. You had to send a lot of points, but you can basically buy like miscellaneous Capcom stuff like t-shirts. But Who's going to do that and mess up their man now? Not me. Anyways. There you have it. Only most of Warlords.